Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft! I'm back with another video for you guys and today we're making some modular cobblestone short walls. This one is super easy to follow along with and very entry level. You don't need any fancy tools or equipment. You can pretty much build this with just foam core and a sharp knife. And then you can kind of paint and finish it up with whatever materials that you are comfortable with. But first I want to give a quick shout out to two crafters from the Tabletop Crafters Guild on Facebook. Their photos of their builds really inspired me to make this video. And that's because I saw their photos and I was like, you made this? I made this. Now I've made it a video. <laughs> All jokes aside, I totally love that group. It fills me with so much inspiration. So I just wanted to give a quick thank you and shout out to John and Kat uh, with their two posts that directly inspired me to make this build. Uh, I put links to their uh, individual posts in the description if you want to check out what I'm talking about. So my thought process here was to take the idea of these modular short wall segments that you can build into whatever kind of arrangement on the table you want and they can function as either like full-size walls that people can just see over or they're literally short walls and then you can kind of have characters on top of them and, and, and whatever you you like. So I want to take that idea and I want to try and recreate it but using only foam core like I had mentioned before. And while I'm working on that I also want to take that idea and apply it to these uh, planter segments so I can cut a trench in the middle and kind of fill that with foliage and ma make these little uh, segments that you could be using as like a herb garden or like a, a overgrown uh, planter space or uh, very versatile. You could see yourself using that in a lot of situations. So with all the preamble out of the way, I don't want to keep you guys waiting any longer. Let's just jump right into the build. Okay, so to start out, I'm just going to take regular sheets of foam core and I'm going to peel the paper off of both sides. Then I draw out a ton of inch by inch squares. These will be what I use to make all of the columns. While I'm at it, I will also make some inch and a quarter squares. These will eventually be the caps for our columns. Once I have enough squares drawn out, it's time to cut them out. And for this, I'm just gonna use a sharp X-Acto knife. And I'm really emphasizing the fact that this is sharp because it's very important. If you come at foam core with a dull or even, you know, not pristine blade, you're more likely to have the foam pull and tear as you're cutting through it instead of getting a nice clean cut. And I really try to avoid this, so I always come at foam core with a sharp knife. For this, I use a knife sharpener, or you can use just a fresh blade every time, but however you feel to do it, just make sure that your knife is got a good edge. Now I want to texture all the sides of my inch by inch squares to make them look like stone. For this, I'm just using a broken piece of brick that I found on the side of the road, and I'm hitting them against it. You could use any kind of rock or even a tin foil ball, but this brick is just what I had handy, so it's what I put to use. Now I'm gonna take my pile of textured squares and start gluing them into four piece high columns. For this, I just used white glue, but in hindsight, hot glue probably would have been more efficient and more durable for the steps that come next. Once those are dry, I'm gonna take a tin foil ball and texture the tops. Now with a ballpoint pen, I draw my alternating brick patterns onto the sides of all of the columns. And for the columns that have caps, I don't draw any bricks on the top, and I just glue them to the inch and a quarter squares that I cut earlier. I then enlist the help of my art director to help draw the bricks on the rest of the columns. Many hands make light work. For these, I draw four large bricks, splitting the top of the column into quarters. And then I draw some cracks and chips onto the tops of all the columns as well. Now I start building my columns into wall segments. This part is really simple, but it was fairly tedious because I glued the columns together with the small amount of white glue before, so they kept breaking apart while I was working on them. The idea here is that I'll be gluing the columns together in segments of two or three, and to hold them together, I'm stabbing a toothpick through them and clipping it to length. And then, using plenty of white glue, I fill the hole and the gap between them and press it together. I do this for the segments that are three inches long first, these will eventually be the planters. Before I start gluing my segments with the caps, I'm going to take my sharpened Bard's Craft style kitchen knife, link to the video about that in the top right, and I'm going to use it to cut beveled edges onto the caps for my pillars. Okay, now to assemble all these segments the same way as before. Once those are all set, I'm going to bounce back to the planter segments with my pen and just sketch a rough trench into the middle of them. Then I just cut out that trench 
and re-glue any areas that break off in the process. Once those are dry, it's time for the Black Magic base coat. This is essentially black paint and Mod Podge. This step is pretty much essential for this build. It gives these otherwise fragile pieces a really strong base coat that sinks into the nooks and crannies and really holds them together. Now it's time to paint. And for this, I'm just gonna start by using my standard stone paint combination. And if you've seen my videos before, this would be very familiar to you. But if you're new here, I'll catch you up to speed. I start by using a large makeup brush to overbrush graphite colored craft paint. And once that's done, I dab some random areas with dark taupe and then hit those same areas with light taupe. After that, I dry brush the whole thing with light gray. Then using suede, I will dry brush the highlight areas. And as a final step for the brightest highlights, I use vanilla very sparingly only on the brightest areas and the edges. Now that the stone is done, I will paint the inside of the trenches with a regular brown and I paint all the caps with bronze. I give that a bit to dry, but once it is, I come back and I use my homemade black wash and coat the entire thing. And once that's all coated, I take a brush that just has water in it and I use it to kind of wipe off any awkward areas where the wash might be pooling on the flat areas of the caps. Now I wanna make the caps look like aged copper. So after the wash is dry, I'm gonna mix turquoise craft paint with water and attempt to create a patina wash. I have a scrap piece of foam off to the side to test how thick the wash is. And once I get it to a consistency I'm happy with, I just wash it over the tops of all of my caps. This was really easy and it worked way better than I expected. While those dry, I'm gonna put some plants in my planters. For these, I'm just gonna dive into my flock box and take out various different varieties of plastic leaves and flowers that I have used for other projects and clip them into fairly small segments. Then I'm gonna glue them into the planters fairly sporadically with hot glue. For the first three, I'm gonna make them look like a bit of an overgrown flower garden. And then for the last two, I'm just gonna use grass tufts to make them look like a bit of more subdued herb garden. You can really do whatever you want to these planters and it will look good. Whatever you have on hand is gonna work. The brightness of the plants is always gonna really contrast the darkness of the stone very nicely. So you can't go wrong here. For the final step, I wanna add some moss to the sides of my stone. To do this, I'm just gonna mix a slurry of water, white glue, and light green flocking. Then using a scrap brush, I just randomly distribute it along the sides of all my segments. This is a little difficult to get it to where you want it to go, but I'm trying to press it into the cracks and make sure that I don't have any giant clumps because once it dries, it's gonna be rock solid. Leave that for a day or so to dry and then you're done. Here's what it looks like when it's all finished. And that's it friends, that's all there is to this video. A bit of a quicker one for you this week. However, the next one has the potential to be uh, beefy. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in this kind of hobby content, I have plenty of other crafting and painting videos that you can check out while you wait for the next one. I'll see you guys soon, have a great week.